Welcome to Concept Art Hacks. Whether you're a beginner artist or a seasoned professional, the techniques covered in this course will help you craft beautiful concept art all while speeding up your process. I'm your instructor, Steve Wong, and I've worked on projects with Oat Studios, Microsoft, Ubisoft, Blur, and many more. In this course, you'll learn to create dynamic keyframe paintings with ease and efficiency. We'll cover how to find great references and the method behind my unique sketching workflow. You'll then learn my favorite techniques to go from thumbnail sketch to valley painting using only 2D tools. We'll focus on finessing the valleys within our painting to create depth and contrast. With our valley paintings in hand, we'll integrate 3D techniques into our workflow and use the renders as a base for our final paint over. Although I will be using Moto and Octane, you can apply these techniques to any other 3D package that you might be familiar with. Finally, after adding a bit of color, you'll have an awesome finished painting to include in your portfolio. Begin your journey at LearnSquared.com. Welcome to... Yeah, there we go. Boom, boom. <laughs> nice. Uh, we're live, everybody. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is... This... This is a stream that we've been we've been waiting for uh, for a while. Uh, obviously, the class is already all, already released, so this is sort of like a first time we are having a slightly quote unquote delayed stream. But it usually comes down to uh, planning time and then uh, unexpected events coming up. Uh, one of the things uh, obviously is work related for both of you and me. But also, uh, you know, the 4th of July celebration happening in the U.S. Pretty much everyone is like, I don't think I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I don't think I'm gonna do anything before 4th of July, like right before, because everyone is just like, yeah, I'm kind of like chilling right now. <laughs> so you know, making sure that we can hit the hit the ground running with this one. Uh, we have Steve Wang with us today. Steve, how's how's it going, man? Good. Happy to be on. Thank you for uh, the time. Yeah, I was uh, pretty excited about this class. Uh, it's kind of funny because uh, we have so many courses in the works and we were like planning, OK, like January, February, March, we're going to be releasing yeah. that stuff, you know, <laughs> and then like all of a sudden, every single instru instructor we work with, like something happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and so like the... Um, for the first five months, we we haven't released anything, and it almost looked like Learn Squared wasn't doing much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're like working tirelessly in the background just to get just to get more classes going. We actually have, believe it or not, about ten more courses in this works. Year? Well, if if they are all gonna get be finished, then yeah, all this year. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's just like all of them are sort of like there and in progress but <laughs> it's all predicated like we don't rush anything and you know you have that experience working with us already um uh, that we don't rush you like we want to make sure that you are having fun in the process of creating the class but also you're doing your best as well you know because that's that's usually how how we get the best results um yeah Anyways, uh, the class has been out since Monday. So if you guys go to LearnSquared.com, uh, you can definitely find the class there. It's uh, on sale. I think your mentorship is already sold out. Yep. Uh, which, you know, we all, we can obviously can discuss uh, if it's if it's going to happen in the, in the future. If you're going to open more seats or not, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, for those who are joining us live today, we are going to discuss the class, you know, the goals of what the class is, is about, uh, who is who is it aimed at, you know, who who is Steve? Like, I guess I guess most of you guys already know, but those who don't, uh, you know, might be interested. Like, Ooh, this is awesome art. Let's let's figure out what's going on there, you know. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's maybe start with this. Let's maybe introduce you, Steve. Uh, talk about yourself a little bit. You know who you are, where you from, you know, yada yada yada. <laughs> like all the, all the sure, I love doing that. Right? <laughs> I'm just yep. Um, yeah, I'm from Taiwan and grew up in Vancouver, Canada. So kind of always been like an art kid, and uh, I was pretty fortunate that after I finished high school, I actually got to go to art center for like two years, and that was when I was doing industrial design or like product design. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then basically that turned out to be like not what I wanted to do. So then on YouTube, I actually found uh, it's funny because I was I was actually there in our center and there was people doing concept art, entertainment design, but I wasn't aware of what they were doing. I thought they were just a like, illustration major or whatever. And then I discovered concept art and then I, I went to Singapore for a year to study uh, in concept art yeah. and then came back to Vancouver to work ever since. Yeah, so I think I've been pretty fortunate to, like, I learned a little bit from Art Center. I learned a little bit from uh, uh, Feng Zhu, and then I also learned a little bit from uh, Brainstorm, like John Park and James Pegg. Mm -hmm. So they helped me immensely. And obviously, all you know, when when Gumroad took off, like, there was just just Tutorial City all day. Yeah, uh, I remember the Gumroads <laughs> when oh, it came I, out. <laughs> it, it was like it came out and then it, it kind of just stopped. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, you know what happens usually? It's like, um, I think I think it's uh, it's it's pretty much the same to, well, not the same. You, you can still see like Gumroads coming out. You can still, like, I think ArtStation has their marketplace. So it's like, a, you know, it's like, um, whatchamacallit, a bite-sized, uh, you know, learning experience I, I i i call it this way right, right. uh and in most cases I, i've i've noticed a lot of artists including myself would do that but it's just like once you once you teach something and you, you do it on the whim like you kind of run out of ideas what to teach on right and right. there are some instructors that kind of go on and on and on you know <laughs> yeah for sure and just like regurgitate the same ideas just just through the different topics which I guess, if you're just into uh, into it by just looking at the process, could be could be cool, but in most cases, it's not like you're learning much more from you know new releases, unless it's like a completely new topic and whatnot. There's a couple of outliers that do it really well. Yeah. Um, but generally, you know, um, generally not. Uh, I would say, you know, and that's one of the reasons why why. I, myself and other folks involved with learn square we kind of ventured into uh starting this platform because it's it's like with gumroads you can it's a hit or hit or miss you can find good material you can find kind of average material sometimes you find good material but it sounds like someone's recorded in the toilet <laughs> and it's like ah it's impossible to to hear um what's going on so that's like we wanted to make sure that whatever we were doing we're doing here it's like uh cohesive really really well you know moderated material and you know it's actually coming from the people that work on the highest level in the industry you know like the yeah. the the killers i would say of of you know whether it's concept art photo photography 3d art all that stuff and obviously uh yeah we're, we're trying to get better every time but yeah remember that <laughs> no gumbers, i think you guys the i think you guys days. you guys are the killers of making classes i feel like this is the first time i've made any kind of online videos and the process was really smooth mm -hmm. at least on my end oh you so wish I, you, you're, you're happy now like if you just started doing that with us like in the very beginning <laughs> it was so different dude. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think everyone who's been who's who has been a student of learn squared can tell that uh the way the courses are presented changed dramatically from the very first class released to now, uh, at least to a certain degree. Like we unified, we basically unified the quality of the, the, the audio across the board. Uh, classes are structured a little better. They're, you know, more, more cohesive and like the way we make actually make them, you know, because that's that's the part that is uh, that I think improved behind the closed doors um that no one no one uh, you know no one knows about uh, outside of us and the teachers is like how easy it is right now like, well not easy but how much easier it is to make the class uh considering your guys's time you know yeah like how much time you have to invest versus how much time we are investing and like how it's all being produced because it used to be way different like if you would if you would do a class with us like in 2016 let's say i can guarantee you would have like three four times more work <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you guys before you guys have like the whole video you recorded on how to set up the mic oh, that helped that helped me a lot <laughs> well like recording the video on how to set up a mic wasn't too difficult 
but getting to a point where we knew which kind of microphones we want to use mm -hmm. that don't break the bank, you know? Right. I think I went like through the whole loo of different microphones, like uh, USB devices and all that, all that jazz. Like it's, it's kind of crazy. Like when you, <laughs> when you jump into that industry, uh, like with the audio equipment, you can, you can just go into deep end. It's almost like with photography, right? There's so many different cam camera brands and lenses, lenses and everything. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to find the right solution. So we actually, at the end of the day, we, I think we found something that it's, it's not too expensive, uh, which we, we cover the cost of it, but it's also super easy to set up. You know, it's not like a difficult task to get it all connected and working. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's great. It, yeah, everything was I mean, for, obviously, for people listening and the students taking the class, they wouldn't know the process behind the scene, but it's very smooth, like step one, step two, step three and <laughs> upload here, here and here and it's all done. Yeah, we're trying to make everyone happy as much as we can, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing <laughs> while, while sustaining while sustaining the business as well. <laughs> and that's the that, trick that goes into it it's not easy <laughs> yeah i bet <laughs> um but anyways yeah dude so what what is your what is your um what you what you're up to nowadays i know i'm pretty sure there's like a bunch of nda contracts that you might not be able to talk about but more of like the recent work you've done mm -hmm. I, I know you worked with oats studio for instance yep. that's the neil blomkamp's uh you know endeavor yep. um yeah I would, I would love to talk about uh, some of the some of the major projects just to get you know our students more uh, uh, in line with what you what what, you, what your experiences are and how that can help them uh, and how you translate them into the class itself you know sure yeah um, I think with with Oat Studios it was actually pretty interesting like he he kind of found I think he found me on our station or something I don't remember mm -hmm. but he he sent me an email and I had, he his email was so short and loose I had to just make sure it was him okay. so my my re my response my response back was are you the real neil blomkamp and he's like yeah dude his response is two words yeah dude <laughs> <laughs> and then um yeah and then he's like yeah come in and it was like this warehouse um it used to be a, it used to be like a i think a kitchen store kitchen appliance store mm -hmm. so a lot of this a lot of the sets were actually old kitchen appliances and then um yeah, I started working with him, and he kind of just kind of sold me on his his vision of creating this totally creatively free um, environment for himself, obviously, and as well as for the artists working. And like most of the people there, you're there's one or two people per department, right? So then you really you sure you're a concept artist or you're a three D modeler, but then you're also a concept art lead or an art director in that sense. Right. Yeah. So that was awesome, and I think that experience. Was like at first it was really scary to have a guy like him just kind of check up on you every two hours like live like you can't even you can't even dodge the email he just he just walks up to you and and ask you hey what what is that and then a lot of times he he just kind of cuts out ideas very very early on mm -hmm. yeah but then yeah i think I, I think eventually we actually got a uh, like a props department a, a practical department in the back and that was when i really started to feel like we're part of something that's really cool because then they'll build I remember there's one short uh, called Lima. I don't think it's out, but we do have the trailers out. So if anyone you can go to my website and there's that suit that um, um, I designed, and it didn't take a, it didn't take a very long time. And then they were calling, yeah, that one, the um, yeah. yeah, it didn't take a very long time. But then I got called to a meeting with like ten guys, and there's like some producers and some prop makers there, and they were just talking and talking. They like, you should probably sit in. I'm like, ah, okay, whatever. And then by the end of it, I was like, well, what are we talking about? Are we making the suit practical, all practical? And they're like, yeah. And how, like, how much is it going to cost? They're like, I don't know, like 150 grand. And I was like, okay, can I spend another maybe like two weeks on it? Because this didn't, didn't, didn't take long at all. And they're like, no, we have no time. And, and you know, it's considered cheap. So there's a lot of those things when, when it comes mm -hmm. to oats. It's just like we got to get things done. There's just no time. Like Gorilla kind of style. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it, I think, I think a lot of the, the the team on set had to improvise. Like, how do we make um, low budget stuff looks decent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's always a challenge, especially in film. I, I think people get um, 
get this this idea that because the films have such high budgets, you know, that means uh, a lot of a lot of people will spend a lot of time, you know, pre in pre production and whatnot. It's a case to like very selective few films, but I think what you're describing is pretty much almost like a reality of a, of a typical filmmaking where you know things might be a little more organized because uh, there is more people working on the project. Like the art departments are are bigger on the higher productions, but the way the budget budgeting goes is pretty much the same. You know, like you you're designing, you might have only time to design something quick, and then you have to move on to something else. Right. Um. So yeah, and you know that's that's actually pretty pretty interesting point to be measured here as well is that you know Neil Blomkamp is not it's no one to sneeze at like I, that's a guy who produced like three or four like really high budget films already, uh, well like really well recognized films. Yeah, uh, some of them were actually surprisingly low budget, like yep. District Nine, like what was it, like thirty million dollars, right? I think that was the the total. Yeah, budget of the film, and it looks like a 300 mil film, you know. Yeah, and it's crazy because we're talking about it, and then you realize because I right I right now I'm I'm 28, and I started working with him when I was 20, when I was 25 or 20 25, and then you realize that guy he made District Nine when he was 27, and that that was his first feature, and his first feature got like nominated for a bunch of stuff. Like I don't think who who does that for your first film. <laughs> So he's a he's something else, man. And it's it's cool, like looking at his, even his process. Like I'll I'll ask him stuff, like like what he, what does he listen to, you know, like when he when he works and you know his inspiration, the books he reads, and he he's really open to sharing all of that. And he has like a wall of just concepts and and film ideas that he's working on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and back when the studio was still like when I was still working at the studio, we have like a Dropbox folder where it's maybe just fifty or sixty short short scripts that he's written. And then some of them have no nothing, just just script. But some of them have like one or two concept art that's right. associated with it, yeah, and so on and so forth. But yeah, that was, that place is awesome, man. That place was like the dream, the dream place for I think for any like creative people. And, and it was fun too. Like every Friday, eventually every Friday we 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 would play Counter Strike. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so that was when it got a little bit less intimidating because like Neil, being an an you know an older dude, doesn't play much games anymore. No time, and right. I'm still relatively compared to him like i played a little bit more games back then so i could actually murder him in counter strike so <laughs> <laughs> that's when i'm like okay you're just a normal guy <laughs> uh, it feels good like uh <laughs> and then like a day later all the changes <laughs> yeah all the changes i hear <laughs> what, what the fuck are these <laughs> yeah. crush him. <laughs> i remember the man I remember like the first game we played and i was just using like a sniper and you can hear him from the other room just like swag He's just yelling and like the bang on the on the wall like fuck fuck <laughs> but that studio was amazing i think if you ask anyone who's worked there they would tell you the exact same thing yeah yeah it sounds like a lot of fun times it's like a very dynamic you know environment uh very sort of fluid organic moving like fast-paced uh but also fun at the same time yeah. How was uh, how was like the creative ability like for you um, when you worked uh, with Oats? Was it were you constrained a lot with what you can do and what you can't uh, in terms of like design language or you know w- w- what's your perception on this? I think he is. I think Neo has a pretty strong vision. So I think depending on how you want to take it, it's pretty free. But then you have to be you have to be working with him within his style. Right. So yeah. Then, yeah. Like I, I can't be pitching weird stuff yeah, for the most. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. that's and that's pretty much aligns with how you when you work in the industry when you work on the whether it's like a smaller project or high high more high profile project, um, you will end up in most cases trying to sort of like I call it translating words into art, um, because because literally you're either translating, uh, let's see, you're translating the the script or the ideas from the director um and sometimes sometimes the director will just throw in a topic and they will say like just just go with it you know but i think the 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 latter or the 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 former happens more where you actually have to uh pay attention to what director wants versus what what you can bring to the table Uh, yeah yeah so that's kind of cool 
Especially with oaths too, like a lot of it is just budget too. Especially when it comes to suits and things that actors have to actually wear, um, a lot of the ideas just get shut down. Um, but even like that, for example, this this the image we're looking at right now, the Praetorian suit, like that was completely. I you could say I have a lot of vision. I had a lot of creative control on it because I got to spend a lot of time on it. But at the same time, he was very very keen on the idea of having this armor that's like a parrot or African. A South African gray parrot because he has one. Oh, okay. so every time he yeah every day he goes home he looks at it, he plays with his, with the, with that bird and he's like no this is so cool you have to do the armor like that, and then every time I will give him a, a uh, an, an idea or design he'll be like oh, times two like times two of the amount of feather times two times two <laughs> yeah, and I don't That's I mean funny. I feel bad for them the the, the the guy who had to rig it because every single panel in the final short is rigged. Mm. Yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. That's uh, funny. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. Um, I think it's a good segue because uh, your experience and you've you've done uh, a few more projects. I think you've worked on Destiny and 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 uh, Gears of War, right? Gears yeah, 5? Gears. So I think the next thing that will probably be released is what's going to be Gears Five. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you did yeah. some some work for for Destiny Two. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but 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 your experience. I, I think w w w because of one of the reasons I latched on. Uh, you know Neil Blomkamp and uh, and Oat Studio specifically is I'm curious how how that experience actually affected the way you thought about making the class and then therefore moving forward with this what do you think the class th that you've created would be about uh, for those who are interested and maybe on the fence uh, whether to to look into it or not how do you mm. feel like what is the what is the main goal you're trying to convey through the course itself, uh, who 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 is who is it aimed at? Uh, do you think uh, someone who has no experience with concepts, uh, maybe a little bit of experience in Photoshop or something, but no yep. experience in concept art whatsoever, can benefit from that at all, or is it required more to be on a more intermediate level, more professional level? Like, what is your uh, what is your take on this? Right. So I think one of the main thing I learned from Oates was just working with Neo with speed. So that's one of the things I, I kept on emphasizing in in the class is like, how do I, that's why it's called hacking. It's, it's because you're, a lot of times you have to use tricks and stuff. I mean, you, you and, I mean, Maché, you and like Jama, you guys are like the king of just using every tool in the belt and then just, just I think, getting I things think done. Jama is way like more advanced when it comes I, to I that. think he's a, I think he's a full time, <laughs> just, just figuring out new stuff now. Like it's not even working, but I don't know. I mean, he, I, I try to use what I've learned over the past, um, you know, few years on gears and on on a lot of old stuff, just to and I put it in the class. And I, I try to because I've tried many many tools. Like we all we all try new tools and new software, and new plugins. But I think there's a few of them that kind of just stuck with me, um, and they were just really useful. And for me, they're they're really simple to use. And and anyone who's bought the class, you you'll know exactly which ones I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of times it's it's about just knowing, like, it, like for example, like with, with, when when it comes to oats. Because there's only one concept artist, which is me on site, and there's there's a few artists we work with that's uh, that was freelance. There's times where I will have to go from you know like genre to genre, or from like characters to costumes to environment to keyframes, whatever, and so on and so forth. And I'd be honest with you, like obviously I don't think a person can be good at everything, or even have the time to practice everything. Right. So then, so then when it comes to the hacks, I like the one of the thing, one of the lessons in my um, in the course. Is how do I overcome like anatomy, the fear of you doing anatomy, without spending like a decade of just mm -hmm. drawing, painting characters. Um, yeah, I think uh, for the course though, there's, I mean, the reason why I made the course, there's one, there's one selfish reason. One selfish reason is that I just kind of want to give out everything I know. So I, everything I've been using every day for the past like two years or three years, so I have room to. Kind of just take some classes myself. I'm just gonna forget about these for now. Yeah. Right? Instead of like hoarding my, it's not like it's, it's some kind of secret pipeline, but it's just I've been using it way too often, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then for the students too, I think I've been just getting a lot of requests, like things like on Instagram or our station, on like, hey, how do you do that? How do you do that? I'm like, well, why don't I just like why don't instead of answering everybody, why don't I just make a course? And if you want to support me, you can. Yeah. And I think the class is main. I, I think the class for when I was designing the class, it's definitely more for like I'll say beginner to intermediate level concept artists. 
Um, someone asked me last week to send me a message asking like if he has no experience in concept art, like he's never drawn before with his help. I'll be honest, like I'll, I'll, I'll love it if you support Learn Square and support my class, but I don't think it will help too much because I don't, I'm not going over the, the core fundamentals of like the perspective, um, design and color and value. Like yeah. I, I, yeah, I go over a little bit, but it's not enough for you to create uh, portfolio pieces just from my class alone. Yeah. 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 So if you're if you're a student, you you have some knowledge, or if you're intermediate, you you know you're at the beginning of your start of a career, I think the class will help you quite a bit. Yeah, and if you're you know if you're higher than that in terms of your your concept art or or painting level, then and if you decide, decide to support the class, I hope there's still like one or two tricks that you can pick up that you didn't know before. And sometimes like for me, even when I buy classes or uh, gum roads or whatever you know, like say a five hour video, you know, maybe there's like 10 minutes of it that I'm, I really find useful, but to me that's worth it. Cause that changed my entire workflow. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I think, you know, I don't, I don't know if you've done Gumroads or anything like that before, but because it's, because it's structured, the, the class you've made is pretty structured. Uh, you know, it's broken into chapters. Everything is well presented and explained um and you know and it follows sort of like your your mental state on how you approach the concepts and you, you put it in a pro proper way i think you know that connection between fundamentals and or actually that was a comment on on the twitch there is like a great connection between uh the tricks and fundamentals you know yeah like uh you can you can have a great foundation but then like you're missing the tricks right Yep. And then so now this is this is like this conduit that allows you to sort of uh, navigate through like, OK, like I know there's there's certain tools in Photoshop. They do certain things, but I might not have a have an idea yet how to use them or if, you know, whatever else software you're using. I think you're using Modo. Yep. If, I, if I'm correct. Right. Yep. And then uh, and then you're also using key, uh, no Octane. Octane. Yeah. Yep. For rendering. Yep. And so like you, you, when you're when you're starting, you know, OK, like everyone is telling me to use 3D and then you have like the list of, of hundreds of different so no, well, hundreds, but like dozens of different software yeah. to choose from. And every software is different. And then someone's telling you like, oh, you, ha you should definitely use like a proper rendering engine because it's just like going to make everything look real, real, real realistic. Yep. And then, OK, well, like, which one? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's like Octane, there's V-Ray, there is like all of those uh yeah. you know arnold uh is like you name it there's just so many and you, you can get so so easily get lost and i think the the power of what of the class like this is like you're showing one of many paths uh of which choices you can pick and sort of get familiar with but you're presenting it in a way where where someone can then take that and apply it to completely different software. Because whatever you teach, let's say with Modo, can be easily translated into 3ds Max, Blender, any other software. You just have to learn how the tools tools work. Similarly with, with Octane, right? Like you, yep. you pick up on how Octane will render, you get familiar with how shaders work and how, what's the sort of like the general idea behind rendering or standalone rendering software or a plugin. And then once you know that, then it's you pick up another one and you start to see similarities. And those similarities allow you to sort of like pick the, the different software that you might like more because of the way UI works and the way it presents itself, whatever, or just yep. by taste, that that works better for you. But now you, you have that foundation, that trick. Okay, this is this is what using tricks means, you know? Yep. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's pretty powerful, uh, and you know I think I think uh, it's it's one of those classes which breaks that that mold of like you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that because uh, doing that is cheating. You know? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get some hate mails. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, keep them coming. I mean, it's, um, I I don't think I mean there's definitely cheating, but. You'll cry all the way to the bank collect, That's collecting right. checks from clients. <laughs> That's actually what I was doing before uh, before I came on the stream. So. Just, just wiping your, <laughs> your face with with, uh, with Benjamin Franklin's. <laughs> that yeah, could hurt. 
<laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I think I saw a comment on the video uh, on the trailer you guys posted. And then because I think it's a keyframe environment class. And then one guy was like, I wish Maché Kachara was teaching this class. And then to me, I'm just like, do you not realize that Maché literally has like two or three classes and he owns Learn Squared? You can just take those classes too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, it's funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of like past year, I've been more like behind the behind the closed doors kind of person, yeah. trying not to like f uh, um, front face with, with the company. I think it's just like alleviates a lot of stress. You know, I have this, uh, you know, this is a little off topic, but um, one of the one of the worst parts about being a being in business of, of doing anything, especially when it when it comes down to dealing with artists, is that a lot of times like artists and artists we're we're trying to be as friendly as possible you know <laughs> yeah. like we get so so little opportunities to actually meet and talk with people uh because usually we're just so you know working all the time basically pretty much oh, but you but you meet with people and you like learn their craft and and vast majority of concept artists illustrators and designers are really really good people you know so mm -hmm. you, you become with, with them uh you become friends with them real quick uh what happens when you when you start a business and you deal with artists as a business person is that the <laughs> dynamic becomes so weird and like oh my god because because now now i'm this asshole behind uh behind the numbers you know right <laughs> <laughs> i hate now you doing understand that. i hate doing that uh, um so that's why i'm sort of like less uh like quote unquote you know front facing um mm. but but it's you know at the same time it's it's fun it's fun so I see. Uh, doom, 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 doom. What else? What I was trying to say. Hey, Anyways. can I ask you? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Because I think you've been doing the the Showtime Showtime stuff with, like that the the anime shader that you've been working on for a while, right? Like, do you think? What do you think about concept art just going more and more photo real? Do you think that's just going to end one day? Um. I don't know. I, th the more I use tools, and that's why I like your class the most. Like not not the most, but uh, that's that's one of the reasons why we ma we made this class. And I I love the way you approach things because because the way you approach things is very aligned to way I, the way I approach things personally. Is that you're not looking at tools or like uh, you you're looking at the final result in the first place. You know. What matters to you the most is how the class is going to be at the end of the day. Like, what is what is the the end result? Like, what's the image going to look like for a client? Rather than like, oh, is it like purely done with A, X, X Y, and Z? You know, right. I don't think that matters for clients specifically much at all. And no. I think I think the way the way the future is going is like the more. I guess the more you can learn to sort of like be a trickster in a way. So like understand foundation because without foundation, it's actually pretty difficult to use those tricks because then you're like, you know, all the tools, but you don't know what, like where to, where to use them. Right. It's like being an absolute master of knowing what tools can be used to repair cars, but have no idea how engine works, you know, right. kind of right. deal. Yep. But once you know how the engine works and you have all the tools, then you know like which tools you can use. And then you can, uh, if you want to do like modifications, then you can become really creative with it. Right. For sure. Um, and there's usually like, there's, especially when it comes to art, there's literally an infinite amount of tool to really get to the same result. So then I don't, I never really think it's like, you have to use this to get that. It's just that personally, yeah. that's what I use. And to me, that's easy, but, but there's probably a better, I, you know, better one out there. I just don't know it yet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you know, you I think this class this class uh does it well because you're teaching like this conduit between foundation and and hacks. So you're sort of like showing a pathway and by doing that you're encouraging people in my opinion to be open to different kinds of tools that can be used to achieve different results, right? Because yeah. that's the whole sort of like mantra behind what your class really is about. And that I think that alone is a skill that everyone should possess, because the the quicker you understand that tool is just a tool, and and the fact that you can learn it quick is probably more important than anything else. Right. Uh, is is when when you're gonna progress really really fast. If you just get married to an idea of of just using one thing, and one thing only, then you're gonna get stuck with this and left behind because people are gonna move on and pick some pick pick up something else and and get better at it you know yep so um 
Yeah. Uh, dude, let's talk about the class itself a little more. Uh, sure. You know, we, we've kind of discussed what, what's the overall arching, like overarching goal and, you know, what kind of, what, what students can expect. Uh, let's maybe dive into the, the lessons themselves. Just like sure. break down. We have four lessons, obviously, uh, you know, break down from lesson one to lesson four, what people can expect when they take the class. Yep. Uh, you know, lesson by lesson, I guess. For sure. Yeah. So I think the bulk of what you, most people will find useful is if especially if you're a beginner will be from lesson one to lesson three, right? So in lesson one, I basically go through my uh, Photoshop setup. You have my brushes, all you know, the plugin I use, the reason why I set it up, just kind of through, you know, the past six, seven years of working, I try to make sure my, you know, my, the placement of my tools are just in the most efficient way possible for, for my own process. And then I think one of the things that I think I'm sure you talk about it a lot about it on your stream is references, right? So that's when I dive into using, like, how do I find reference and what's, I remember that, okay, I, I watched this one video you and Aton did and you guys went on and on about references and I watched that probably like three times. So I think that's something that I really want to bring to this class as well. Like what is a good reference? And furthermore, like maybe you have a quote unquote a incorrect or bad reference, but then maybe you can light uh, edit the photo to make it a good reference. Mm -hmm. Should you know what the final result looks that you want looks like already? Right. right? Yeah. And then after that, uh, I, I basically go into, uh, we look at like some of the master paintings and what, what it means to have like shapes, how do you, how to combine shapes, how to design with just black and white value. And then at the end of the lesson, basically we take it into Photoshop and I provide you with a set of, uh, you know, black and white graphic brushes. Very, very, uh, the philosophy that bought it, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But they just create interesting shape without too much effort. Right. Uh, yeah. And then we design our composition that way. And usually each composition would take anywhere between, like, let's say, 5 to 15 minutes, depending on the complexity. And that's it's one really quick way for us to get uh, ideas out. And there's even there a, yeah, some there's, homework. There yeah, there's a, there's a guy. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Boom. So it, has, it, have, it hasn't been a, been a week yet. And already Damn. Hard working, man. <laughs> awesome stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I think that's Karine uh, Villevo. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Sorry for that. Karine. <laughs> uh, Anyways, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry, no, it's I cool. um, no, 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 all good. I think it's that, that's what. And if you're like an absolute beginner, I, I you can probably spend a lot of time just in lesson one. Like the way I did it, I I, I think I did nine thumbnails. But here you can do. Just do more and more and more and more until you find one that you you truly like, especially if you're not under client pressure. Yeah. And, yeah. And then I think one of the things that I like to do uh, at the end of every single every single lesson is I do a little self reflection mm -hmm. and self critique session at the end, and just kind of go through my own process of like why do I think certain elements are working and and why do I think not. So hopefully that helps with uh, you know with with the class as well. Yeah, and for those for those who have never seen uh, Learn Squirt classes before, and you're like, hmm, I'm I'm interested, but I, I don't know. Uh, the the cool part about, and this is this is something like we we started to become more aware aware, uh, based on the the feedback from our students, you know, from the from the early classes that we've released, that we could be better at structure, generally speaking. And so that we started doing that more and more precise and the way the class, the classes are constructed right now, uh, is, you know, you have, you have it broken down into those sections. Uh, all of those sections have like bite sized, uh, little chapters. So you don't have to watch like 20 minute video or like half an hour video with like bunch of information squeezed into it. And you have no idea like, all right, like he talked about the brushes, but where was it? You know, yep. <laughs> it's like it's so difficult to find that. Uh, so we, we structured it. So you have those chapters. You can always go back to, you know, something. Let's say if you're doing a, a sketch or something and you're using specific tool and you forgot how this tool's, tool was used, you can always go back to that tool section and, and look at what what was, you know, how the tool was described there. There's small things like that that just make make the whole flow work a little better. And yeah, as you said, like you can just rewatch the, it's pretty obvious you can rewatch stuff, right? But, mm -hmm. but, but I, I, you know, the, the most frustrating part I, I have when I, if, if I, let's say go on YouTube and I want to find out about something 
and let's say if I find that the result is great and someone's using that tool and explaining that tool, but then they also squeeze in like hundreds of different tools and informations <laughs> that are not really related to what I'm looking for. Yep. And then like you want to go back in time and find where that was, unless you make like your mental note or, or a note on a napkin to get that idea. It's like so, so difficult to find that information. So like imagine rewatching the same video over and over for like, a, a video is like 45 minutes to an hour. And yeah. You to find that information that sucks. You know? <laughs> yeah. You'd be discouraged but by the time you find it. Yeah. Yeah, but even for I think the way you guys structure it too, it's actually really cool for like the instructor of me like making the class too, because it forces me to kind of organize my thoughts a little bit more mm -hmm. instead yeah. of just <laughs> dumping it in twenty minutes video. <laughs> and Momo kept on saying, "Here, do it like do it like bite size, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes." Yeah, like it's, okay, it's easier, <laughs> way easier. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, cool. So the first the first uh, lesson is pretty straightforward. Uh, yep. Pretty good stuff. What about the lesson two? So lesson two, uh, we take uh, one of the one of the graphic thumbnails that you know that we did in lesson one, and we basically take it to a semi-presentable level. I think most people, most client would understand kind of where this painting is going at this point. And the tr the thing with this particular lesson is I'm doing it purely with 2D, um, just to just Photoshop, because I think I want to illustrate before we get into the hacks, like quote unquote the hacks or whatever mm. 3D 3D stuff. Like all of this can be done just 2D and. Sh and you should probably learn how to do it in 2D first before right. you before you hack it, right? And there's also certain paintings, certain certain things that are probably better with you know like depending on efficiency. Like for example, I'm not going to build a desert. It, it's probably easier to use a photo or just paint it, right? right? Stuff like that. And in this lesson, though, in the beginning, we I kind of just go into values, um, really really basic uh, material differences between values, and then how. And then again, I think I I'm not too sure if I did it in this lesson, but I go into how masters manipulate values mm -hmm. and then merge the values together to create interesting shape, kind of tying back to lesson one's graphic thumbnails, mm -hmm. right? So you're kind of stylizing value, even though if you're looking at an actual photograph, it would not present itself that way. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. yeah, it's all, all structured. Uh, I, I kind of like used to work that way. You know, it's, it's kind of funny because this is sort of like a necessary step, I think, in in many cases. But once you once you practice it enough, practice a lot of those things we're discussing enough, then eventually they just become like a second nature. I'm, I actually have a question to you because, like, when you were constructing the class, mm -hmm. you know, I I had that experience personally where I would and and that's why I think like the my my second class is just well what much much I guess much better constructed in yep. terms of like transparency than the first one is because like with the first one it was I'm kind of like going with the flow with the second class is uh, I actually had to think about what I'm teaching you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then like uh, sort of breaking the presumptions of um, of oh I like I know it then th therefore they know it too you know <laughs> yep. like what was your did you had that problem when you were when you were trying to create the class like just running yourself into a into a spot where like, oh wait, I actually do have to explain that stuff because. Yeah, well even even just in the very first like two videos, like when I was doing Photoshop, I don't even know the shortcut I use because I just use it. And then <laughs> I had to go back and make sure I figure everything out. Um, and even when, especially when it comes to the 3D stuff, I think it, it's a lot easier when I'm used to it. Like I know exactly where the plugins and the buttons and all the, what, what the numbers are doing. Mm -hmm. But then I'm having to explain that and having to break that down. It's definitely I, I probably there was one video. I think it was on the Moto or the Octane one where I was trying to make it under 15 minutes, but I had, I recorded it many, many, many times because I, I kept on. I, I'll, I'll listen to it again and then be like, ah, that doesn't even make any sense because a yeah. person who's never said will not will not understand what I'm talking about. Um, But yeah, man, totally, totally. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a like. uh such a mind bend bender, you know. It's like, huh? But, you know, yeah. and, and sometimes when when students come back to you, um, I, I, you know, I, I hope you're gonna have less of that personally. <laughs> but you know, because like we the way we structured it now, it's 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 way more cons constructed. Before it was like we're we're giving more more like less const less uh, not quote unquote ba boundaries, but structure to yep. how the classes were made and so the the teachers would just make something and never think about mm, i didn't really explain 
what that is because it's in my head and then the students would come back it's like can you elaborate right um which you know hopefully now with the way the everything is structured is like way better i mean it's it's the new the new way of of how things are done has been like that for past few years so we're just like right now it's more of like looking at the feedback from the students as well and and figuring out if there's any any room for improvement even on top of what we already have or we really try to listen to that and we're like finding also there are certain aspects of how the classes are made and what we are trying to to sell with the classes apart from just like what the content is but like how uh, how the extra parts of the or, or extracurricular parts of the constant content are made uh whether they are even valuable for students or not yep and if there's something else that we could potentially add to the classes that could definitely be better and then like balancing that with um our instructors and their their time commitment and how much time they can commit to this uh versus their lives and and actual work you know yeah um yeah i think one of the toughest part right today is like to find to to figure out what to teach right because like there's so many videos out there already i mean gumroad schools there's a lot of physical schools there's learn square so then like even when initially when momo when i were talking about it i I just simply said i just I, i i could do it but i just don't know what would be valuable that you guys don't already have and then yeah. I'm glad we kind of figure out something just in between the fundamental and hacking stuff that there might be a little bit of a gray area I can play with. Um, but yeah, otherwise, man, I'm, but to, personally, I'm really excited to see um, what you guys come up with. The 10, 10 courses, you know, fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, well, there is there is a certain level of like some of some of the courses we are uh, we've released or been working or are working on right now you know there's a certain degree of students uh that really like a specific artist you know and you want to learn specifically from them because you feel like what they are creating is very like resonating very well with with how you think and how you how you do the work or right. maybe you've heard them on a podcast and the way they think and, and teach uh, or potentially teach that that will resonate with you better but i you know i the way the way we look at it, um, and we're gonna go back to you know the breakdown. We have three and four, lesson three and four to talk about as well. But the way the way the, the philosophy we have, and we're trying our best, uh, failing sometimes, and get, doing better job at once, and not not so good at other times. I I mean, I hope based on the feedback of or just the fact how many students we have and um you know the community we have at, in, in the discord how great i mean that the discord community is awesome by the way like all the guys who are and girls that are in the in the discord you guys are amazing like you are basically making learn squared <laughs> happen um but our our drive is to make you know when you when you think about learn squared you know this is a this is a quality thing like this is something this is not like a like a gum road uh tutorial or you know a youtube video uh and i'm not not bashing any of those you can you can definitely find awesome information for both i use both like don't get me wrong i i watch gumrose i watch art station i watch all of that uh but but my goal is like finding those little nuggets of information yep um and i think uh professional uh, artists who have already already a lot of experience will, will approach learning in the, that way but someone who, who who learns from from the scratch, let's put it this way, or they are not so experienced and they want to learn and, and and have like a have a proper way of approaching subject engraved in them and not getting lost. I think that's where where using YouTube and Gumroads and all those uh, avenues becomes problematic because you don't know like you might find a, a a great artist. You know they are working on high level projects. They might not be a great teacher and i've i've seen the videos like that where i would just purchase like this guy just rips like his work is amazing and i would just fall asleep after 20 20 minutes you know yep. <laughs> uh, that happens and then you would you would find someone who is maybe not the best artist but they are absolutely amazing te- amazing at uh explaining stuff yeah so it's like very difficult to find someone who's like uh uh, uh you know good at the both of the worlds like they're good at explaining stuff and teaching but also like have a lot of experience they're great artists you know yeah. like top of top of the line artists 
um and like that's something we we try to not to compromise ever if possible right with 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 uh, our classes so anytime you think learn squared uh it's supposed to be a place where you know you're learning about something that is used wi widely in the industry by absolute professionals and uh the best people in the world and sometimes yeah. it could be something simple you know arguably a, a simple sort of way of thinking a simple way of, of of constructing things but even that that gives you like a, a almost like a blueprint okay if they are doing that and working on like avatar and what and whatnot that means that means that that, that formula works and it's yep. supposed to be approached that way right yep. um yeah yeah Agreed, it's man. a complexity of of business and then getting into uh who who is good at teaching and what what artists we can actually attract meaning not, not a you know they're gonna have time in their busy like busy schedules b are cordial enough to actually teach <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and then c they're amazing also there's just so many layers to to it you know and then just like live co comes into it and oh the stars will have to align man yeah exactly <laughs> uh, yeah so we, we're not rushing anything we would like to have 20 courses released every every year or 30 that would be amazing yeah you know but <laughs> like i i i feel like that as you said it's like what do we, what can we teach so that it's not overlapping that's another thing we don't want to do like make yep. three courses that are exactly the same and by a different people yep you know like I don't think that's a big benefit. That's why I stopped making Gumroads because I don't, you know, I don't think it's a benefit for, for people to, uh, you know, for people to, to buy product that is just regurgitated stuff that I already made. Yeah. Because I've 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 taught so much already, like so many different different subjects. There's no reason for me to do it anymore. Yeah, your your Gumroads are like thirty hours long. Yeah. So yeah, there's I'm a lot. I'm working on my new class, but that's not a subject of today. <laughs> mm. Oh, um, now you're gonna get emails. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's jump into class, uh, lesson three. So lesson two sure. is like you are still into that vibe of like let's teach you about, you know, painting with values and, and a little bit of tip, tip, tips and tricks of, you know, adding those those little. Uh, you're sort of like scratching the surface of hacking let's put it this way yeah but, but giving like a, enough foundation so that you're when you're jumping into hacks themselves quote unquote hacks you actually know what you're doing yeah so i think lesson three is when we start using a little bit of that 3d and you know there's a there's a plugin in zbrush called z builder and there's this website or this plugin called mixamo like there's things that you can use to really speed up the process if you're um if you're doing like a keyframe or environment and then and I, one of the things I, because there's a, there is a lesson in here called bonus painting. And one of the things I really wanted to do when I was making this class is try to make it sound a lot more like a conversation than, than it is a, like a class, like me telling somebody exactly what to do. So I like to have fun. And this is, this is one of those classes where uh, the bonus painting, I just had a glass of whiskey and I just kind of started recording. Mm -hmm. I wasn't planning on, I wasn't planning on making that painting. I was just going to go straight into uh, you know, building the building a scene from the lesson one sketch. Right? So I kind of just kept on recording, and then I thought I thought it actually turned out to be maybe hopefully a valuable lesson to, to just going and you know you're building in like simple sphere, right? Simple, right? Simple pyramid shape, but then like with displacement maps or even just with simple diffuse maps, which any 3D software can do now. They just putting in a diffuse map, so it looks like it's a, basically you're putting a skin on top of an object. Yeah, yeah. And then painting over that because like my final result, if you've ever seen any of my portfolio uh, works, it's never too, let's say, photo real like or, you know, just like the, the film film finish. So then I, I do like to paint over stuff quite a bit anyways. So then for me, like this process is, is perfect because I get to play with all those um, values, uh, you know, soft, lost edge stuff that we we talked about in the first two lessons. And then for and then the bulk of this lesson after we teach the hack is basically teaching you guys how to once you once you get your images and re, your renders out from any whatever 3D software you choose to use how do I structure the layers in Photoshop to ensure the paintings a is really smoothly and it's, it's, you know the pipeline is, is nice and b it's you can you can make changes quickly if your client asks you to without getting into like 500 layers like right, I usually right. paint in like five four or five layers 
Yeah, yeah. Like the wor- yep. what's the worst can happen? You're doing this beautiful render, and like you render it all, and it's all one like it's only one layer. Yes. Fuck, now I gotta spend like hours <laughs> on end on cutting everything. You know. Yeah. Uh, at so that point, there's... you already lost. At that point, you already lost steam. You're just like ah. Yeah. Nah, I, don't like, I don't care anymore. Do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever you want. Whatever you ask, Mr. <laughs> Client, I'll just give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, those yeah, those man. are small things, but it's like so easy to to miss them. You know, it reminds me of photography so much. Like. It's kind of crazy because like I've started to or not started like I came back into photography a little bit yep. uh, more recently. I used to go uh, for road trips. Uh, I, I'm not like a traveler guy, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I don't, I, I'm not a kind of person that I love traveling. Let's fly around <laughs> the world. Like that's that's just not me. But I like I like going on field, tri- field trips and, and visiting places and like you know experiencing just like even just different people you know like being outside of the la bubble um and like i would always take my camera before especially when i came here to us in the first in the first place i would go to like nearby national national parks and and really enjoy like the beauty of it and like try to capture the best of it in in the camera you know sometimes with 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 success sometimes with the failure yep um but you know it like it just reminds me so much of photography. Like I had this experience recently where I would just go, you know, I went uh, to this uh, place called Big Bear. Uh, yep. It's right by, by by LA. And, you know, I was leaving home, well, not home, Airbnb uh, with my family. It's like, uh, we're just going to go, like, just go grab qu- quick coffee and, and go chill. I was like, I, I don't need a camera. You know, I was like thinking, I don't need a camera. Why would I take the camera now? Like, I'm All just right. going to, to get a coffee and chill. And then, like, at the very end, like, right before we left, it's was like, you know what? I'll just take it, just in case. You know, mm. who knows? Some, some, something might happen. I, I'm just going to put it on the back seat and whatever. Forget it. And literally, we came, like, we, we, we stepped out from, you know, coffee, coffee place, and we're, like, go, going to the park. Like, no way. Like, looked at the lake, and it's, like, the most bizarre, you know, weather con- condition with, like... Sp- you know, this mist coming up, like rolling over and being blown away. It's like, holy hell, it looks like, it looks amazing. Like, and and I, I I was actually bummed that I didn't take other lenses with me. <laughs> I just mm. took like, a, I took 70 to 100, but, but just like that idea that, you know, you're doing something on the whim and that might be useless. That's not true. That's what we're like. Most of the best ideas can come, come through just from like, being organic with it, you know, that's just yeah. like what you you did with the bonus content. Um, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, that short that that short that's the short film you did, right? Recently. Yeah. Well, so that was all from a like a random coffee. Well, it <laughs> like was a, like little... a mixture of like I just like went with <laughs> like random randomness, and then uh, I kind of followed up the later in the evening uh, and then in okay. the morning. Nice. Um. And I made I made so many stupid mistakes, <laughs> uh, like the drone stuff was like literally all the drone footage. <laughs> and, <laughs> like normally you record like maybe, you know, an hour of footage, and then you're gonna find like five minutes of like, yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. And this was like just like ah, oh, let's just fly quick before it just like all disappears, you know. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> uh, and yeah. No, it looks awesome, man. Yeah, I think. Um... The more I, I I do concept art, or paint and draw, the more I'm trying to trying to remember how to have fun with it. Because I think it's really easy once you once you start you know what doing it professionally, to forget about having fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and then having that spontaneous uh, result or just you know like you said, going out somewhere and just taking a, maybe a sketchbook with you if you're not a photographer, take a sketchbook with you, mm-hmm. uh, do an ugly sketch, but something and then that that sketch could be more valuable when it comes to the idea part of. Uh, your your image making process than something you you know you sit down in your studio and you ne- you haven't left your studio in three days like yeah. you're you're not gonna have anything new for that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Agree with you 100. percent All right. Yeah. Lesson four. Lesson four. What so lesson. F- so lesson four is called color illustrations and it's honestly just a repeat process of everything we talked about so far, but it's just done in color, right? right. And the only thing that uh, I I would say it's a little bit different is first of all, I go over some of the basic, it's not It's not really, it's not a uh, complete color theory course by any means. It's like a 15 minute video on how guys like Craig Mullins or uh, Alberto Miogo, like how do they play around with color changes within their brushstrokes? 
because that's something that I've been just really into recently. And how can I apply that into my own painting? And then the only only difference between this part of the 3D and the lesson three would be now it's not in black and white, it's in color. So I'm yeah. considering the shifts between uh, cool and warm quite a bit, quite a lot when I'm when I'm rendering. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then it's the same thing, just going over uh, rendering out a path, and then layer by layer we'll edit it in. And one of the things that one of the things I I, I kind of thought about when I'm when I'm you know recording this class is like in my in, in my initial sketch. I'm basically just balancing black shape versus white shape, like big, small, medium, and then you know sharp, soft, so so on and so so forth. And because this is a is it, this is a a painting done for myself or done for the class, it's not for any client. Yeah, it does. It really doesn't matter what that white shape is. Like it could be snow, or it could be sand, it could be a vehicle, or it could be you know. In this case, it was supposed to be like a ring of the planet, but then it just became a nebula because I thought that was the soft look better against the hard edge. Right. So we, I make a lot of spontaneous decision like that, which everything, everything, every mistake is recorded in the class. Yeah. 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 And I, I, always, I, I try to go back and self-correct and I always explain in every video why I think my decision is better than the previous one. Yeah. It's kind of like it's, it's your flow state sort of recorded, you know? Like yes. Your, your process of, cause that's what it is. Like I, if, um, most of the cases we do make mistakes. Oh, I mean, all the time we do make mistakes. Uh, 99% of the work we do ends up just not Shit. being used ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, when you're working on that, like how many times I go back on my, uh, person, well, not personal, but like client projects, I look at them as like, Oh my God, I yeah. wish I've done it completely differently, you know? Um, but, uh, but that's the part of learning and, and the process, you know? Just yeah. knowing it's like not every not everything is an Instagram filter, you know, like no. things look a little different before you before you actually put a work into them. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I remember at Oat Studios, I met this artist there. His name is Ian Spriggs. I think you met him maybe at THU or, oh, or yeah, something. Yeah. 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 He's awesome. So he's awesome, man. He's a good friend of mine. And we I remember back then he just asked me one day. He's like, hey, man, when's the last when's the last time you did something you're proud of? Like like the last piece you, you were proud of. And then I started looking back to my pieces. I'm like, wow, the last time I did something I'm actually proud of was like two, two and a half years ago. Ridiculous. <laughs> and, and then that's when I kind of realized, okay, I got to do And he's like, yeah, you should do more personal work. So then like to all the students that took this thing in my class, I think, you, you know, that's one of the advice I, I think I gave in the class. And if I didn't, I'm going to just give it now. Like if you have time, just keep, keep up with the personal work, not just mm-hmm. the professional stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Dude, we've blazed through everything. Awesome. That's awesome. Hopefully th- it wasn't too long. One hour? Not bad. <laughs> no, I think I think it's good. Uh, let's see if we have any questions. Guys, if you are listening, I know you are. Um, if you have any any extra questions that we haven't answered yet, it's a good time to to ask them. Yep. Let's see. I'm trying to find if there is there were any. I mean, there's there was quite a few that Momo has answered along the way. Oh, thanks, uh, man. Doom. Uh, there's a lot of like general questions. I'm trying yeah. to read through them. Seems like everybody is excited for the upcoming classes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see. There was a person that uh, for 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 thirteen that already took your class it was like praising it. Thank you. For yeah, that. dude. This guy. I don't know. I don't know who this person is, but dude, you're you're like. I owe you something. <laughs> My, man. My man. My <laughs> man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, someone asked yeah. about like different softwares. That, that that might actually connect to the class because there was someone was asking like you know you have Cinema 4D, ZBrush, Maya, Houdini, 3D Studios, Max, Moto, yada yada yada. Yeah, you get the trial version, but then you also have like Blender, right? Which is completely free. Like, what is your take on this? Is it worth spending money on the? Uh, on like the expensive software. I mean, you you're using Moto, which yeah. I would say arguably is like probably I haven't used Moto in like forever, by the way. Right. You know, and because I've learned, I've eventually learned uh, 3ds Max. It was just working way better for what I need. Yep. Uh, and the integration with V-Ray is like for me that combo is so important. Uh, yep. Even right now. Um, but you know, like, what is your take on this? 
yeah i don't know i think just do blender man <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not I, I i just think it's not if, if you're talking like thousands of dollars or some some software i'm not sure but some software is also on a subscription base right so you're literally it's thousands of dollars per year it's not a yeah it's not a one-time thing so uh based on i've never personally tried blender but based on what i've seen it's it's pretty promising right it's yeah, i i tried to i think good. i tried it i tried it once and then i just couldn't get over the ui so i didn't <laughs> i didn't go on with it but uh, moto was one of those things where i was using at work and you know microsoft had it for free well for free for the employee so then i just kind of picked it up and then start using it and i think at the time uh, i can't remember whose gum road or whose class i took but they were using moto and then teaching octane so then i was you know i was like, okay you know what i'll just use this yeah. And one of the very important things is no matter like, you know, that person listed maybe like six or seven software. I think my advice will also just be like, if you have the money, you can just use whatever you want. But if you use it, just kind of stick with it. Because if you keep on looking around, you can, you, you're you going to go on, you're going to go on this rabbit chase for forever. You know, what's funny. It's like one software releases uh, like a new feature that is like, oh my God, I have to switch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then you switch and then six months later, the software you were using releases the same feature. Yeah. It's like, all right, though well, I'm going back. <laughs> sometimes even better or like other feature yeah. comes along with it. So <laughs> you have to, uh, yeah, yeah, you have to adopt. I mean, I, I did fair share of investigating, uh, blender, you know, yeah. like trying to learn it. I, you know, I had, uh, one of the guys who made the box cutter, box yep. cutter, um, plugin, on art cafe my podcast and we you know we talked about you know he said he said uh, his name is jeremy uh, he said um that you know if i spend an hour with him he would probably like make 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 me completely switch because you know it's just like the way the way you can just like dive into uh i guess translate your knowledge from existing software mm. to the the new one because i know you can custom customize blender a lot right um but then it's like but then like i'm losing all the plugins that i use already you know yeah. I, I know there are plugins that do the the same job or even better arguably yeah um i think i think i'll put it this way if you're starting to learn i would say blender is a pretty obvious choice because it's free yep like that's that alone should be should be uh should be a, a, a huge selling point um it's if someone's telling you it's like not production ready, don't listen. I mean, don't listen to them. It is production ready. Some films already use it. Yeah. Some video games use it. And especially um, if you're just p producing a piece of concept art, there's no really such thing as production ready, right? Ex you're just exactly you're like unless you're working on VFX. Like if you're in a VFX studio, there's no other choice but Maya. Like just yes. let's, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Like they will force you to use Maya. And they complain have, about it. Yeah, and you know the the the, <laughs> the, the reason for it is because like. VFX studios use Maya because Maya is so customizable and, and it's, it has a huge support from like yep. the, the, the company. And so they, they customize every single aspect of it to work specifically for what they need to make in films. That's why they use Ma uh, Maya. Uh, cause you cannot, you cannot customize 3ds max in the same way. You cannot customize cinema 4d in the same way. You know, the way you can script things in Maya, it's just like completely different. I think and oh, they're like, basically like software engineers that, yeah, exactly. I, I I worked with one guy. Um, maybe I'll give him a little plug because he's not very like social media savvy. But mm -hmm. his name is Eric Laguerre, and his company is called Euler R and D E U L E R R and D dot com. Mm -hmm. Man, that guy he 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 worked at Weta, and then they hired him to to uh, to rig smog, <laughs> and then I, I, without giving a timeline, like they were on a very 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 tight deadline already, and then he basically had to go in and code an entirely new software in, within Maya so that yeah. they can made the, the whole dragon which is the point of the movie yeah um, so yeah. it's really maya I can, I can see the power of it if you're good at it man maya's maya's powerful yeah but for a student i can see it just being a complete nightmare <laughs> yeah like <laughs> deciphering like how everything works and make make making the simple stuff work really well yeah pretty difficult um, yeah just use blender guys just use if you're starting out blender man just yeah, blender save some good. money yep uh, we don't have that many more questions and most of them Momo already answered, but there's one cool. more that kind of popped out at the very end. Uh, is there such thing as art jobs for people who just like to draw? Uh, 
which I is think not really so. related to the class, but I think, you know, um, obviously if you take the class then you can make drawings and then if you make drawings, you can make money. <laughs> yeah, no, I think right now we live in such a weird time where there's a lot of people who like the top, a lot of the higher earner in, in the art industry, they're actually not working for clients. I think they're just selling their art online. They just have a big fan base. So yeah, if you have a huge, huge fan huge base, you fan. can make you can make that happen. Whether it's through like let's say uh, Patreon accounts where you set up a Patreon and then you create you know awesome content. Yeah. And people like to watch you. It's like it's connected to you doing what you love doing, but also teaching. I guess right. It's yep. in one way or another. I guess like I. Uh, like a poster child of that would be Ross Tran, right? Yeah, yeah. He would be absolute uh, uh, poster child of just drawing fun stuff, making it really engaging, and 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 making a living doing that. Mostly. Yeah. Um, and I think I think if you scale that level to like the absolute master, then you have come someone like Kim Jong Gi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he just sketches all day, and then there you go, selling selling those and performing, drawing. Yeah. I so, think you can become uh, really popular, whether it's, you can make, there is many avenues for those who are interested. You could just, you know, you can sell it. Yeah. Sell art prints, t-shirts, tutorials, you know, make engaging like video content on YouTube if you have personality for it. And yep. if you actually know you can do it sustain sustainably, you know, because there's one thing just to start a YouTube channel. That's why I haven't started a YouTube channel yet. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's cause like, I don't, I don't know if I'm built for it, you know, like right. just, just to record stuff all the time. I don't know. I like to like engage in the different ideas all the time and, mm. and jump on like more creative projects that are not necessarily speaking related, you know, I guess right. the, the exception would be the podcast, but, but that's a little different. Mm. Um, anyway, yeah, it's quite an engagement. Like even once one video a week, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I've, ever since you guys got, ever since you guys provided me with this mic, I've definitely been thinking about, or even getting requests, like, can you just do some free videos? I'm like, yeah, of course I can, but it's it's not as easy as uh, it seems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's easy just to record and post, but then like people are like, ah, oh, it's not edited in here. <laughs> right. Oh, your voice sounds like shit. Ah, god damn it. Yeah, yeah so, people um, get those expectations very quickly. Sure. Uh, yeah, there's man. one more question. Been enjoying the course so far. When you have to design assets, uh, say ship, et cetera, or more functional stuff, how do how does that factor in time-wise? Personally, mm. I find, I always find design takes the longest in the process and the slowest, and is slowest. Any hacks uh, for designing quicker? <laughs> good um, question. Yeah, that's a very good question. Sense. Yeah, uh, Con I think I recognize Connor. I think he's, we talked on Instagram a few times. Uh, he... Okay, so I'm <laughs> sure you might actually know because your 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 ghost in the shell stuff probably apply to a lot of this. Um, but then I think for me, the time the a time constraint is a kind time constraint, right? There's no way to, out of it. So a lot of times I I try to have like references ready for mm -hmm. let's say functional stuff. I have all, I have a folder that I, and again lesson one I do go over this. I show you guys my how I organize my references over the past seven years. And so for me it's really quick if I'm designing a ship. Or if anything like a hangar door, I know exactly where to look. Yeah. And then maybe I'll spend another, let's say, if I have a whole day to do it, let's say I spend another 20 minutes looking at, you know, online video or like whatever to do some research. So it's, I'm not always relying on the same, uh, the same references. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then after that, I'll say just do your best. And you know, here's the thing: like when you finish an image, just give it to your client. And sometimes, a lot of times, man, they will, they will. They'll tell you like, oh, this is really cool. Is this what you're thinking of? You're just like, yeah, not really, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like you never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just let them decide if they're, it's good or not. <laughs> I think clients, most of them at least, can tell whether you're half-assing something or you're like really trying to get something, you know? Yeah. Uh, if you're just half-assing, oh, I'm just going to knock it out like real quick, then they will sense that sooner or later. Uh, but if you're really trying, even if you're not hitting the mark, they'll give you an idea where to go if you're right. if it's a good client, and you know and it's an plus, experience. So that, yeah, and that's and that's honestly, if you're working with a client on a professional project, that is li literally the point of an art director because he's supposed to direct you into a, the right direction. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. don't don't be too stressed out about that. It's like you get you get certain sets of references, descriptions. Usually, like better clients are pretty pretty good at it, just describing exactly what they want. 
Um, but it, again, it's like a game, right? Like you have to figure out, sometimes you just have to figure out what the language they are speaking. Yep. But you cannot be afraid of failing. Like you cannot be afraid of just like not hitting the mark. But you have to be a good listener, I, I think. Like even sure. if you're not designing something really well and you send it out, like a good client will tell you, or sometimes you get that, like, I don't like it. You know, that's like, what the hell? Like, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> so that's like a whole different different topic. Yeah. But normally you would get enough enough material. And if you're not sort of like attached to your work specifically, oh, like I, I, what I what I think I did is awesome. And what you think you're doing is, is not great. That's not the way to approach clients because you can approach that if you're doing your personal project, but not client mm -hmm. work. They're hiring you to solve their problems, not your problems, you know? Yeah. That's like the base idea. Um, anyways. Yeah, for sure. 100%. <laughs> like yeah. how some digital art said, Sakimi bucks. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're damn right, dude. <laughs> well, it works for know. some people. So it does. Who knows? You know, I, I can't I'm be actually a hater. fascinated by, by that person. Like, I'm, I don't, I, like, I don't, I, I think she's a girl, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about, about her that much. I know she's making really good living doing what she does. I, I, I personally, I don't know if I enjoy any of that, that kind of work at all. I but don't. But there's, <laughs> you know, honestly, there, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. It's honestly, I'm pretty fascinated by it, by it, because, uh, you, you, there has to be something else in it. You know, it's not like it's not random. Like someone just, just, just drawing and then becoming really successful financially. There's, there's, there's. There's an aspect of it, whether it's just intentional or not, whether it's, uh, you know, cheesy or not. Well, she's still making a lot of money, you know, sure. doing that. So there's a demand. Yeah. There's a demand for exactly. that. Apparently. So, yeah. I guess being good at finding the right market, you know, that's that's a skill that a lot of artists don't have. Yeah. I think <laughs> a lot of us, a lot of us do. You're, you're kind of just doing stuff for clients and then you never really show like I think for her, man, I I, I don't know her personally, but I've heard yeah, she's I have been no idea who she is. So, yeah, I, I heard she's been on the on a deviant art scene for like a decade. And so she just accumulated a lot of um, just a lot yeah, of nothing. Fans. Nothing happens overnight. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> like even the the popular Twitch streamers, right? The the ones that go like hundreds of thousands of followers. Yeah. Or like, like the ninjas million. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they did like a decade or longer of, of playing something professionally for like, like really, really professionally, you know? Yep. So. Uh, and they started at like 50 viewers. Like they don't, they don't make yeah. any money from it. Yeah. For like yeah. 10 years. And then like all of a sudden they just, yeah, it's like you become overnight, overnight sensation after, after 10 years of like yeah. building to it, you know? Yeah. That's only reason why it seems overnight is because nobody noticed you before that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Anyways, I think that's 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 all for the questions we have. Mm -hmm. uh, is the 149 price temporary? Yes, it's. Uh, we we usually when we release courses, uh, the price um, we we have a sort of like an introductory price. Right now, we actually can get it cheaper. I don't know where. Uh, I'm not well prepared for this. Believe it or not. Um, <laughs> We have a 4th of July sale. I, I believe it ends this weekend um, where you get, I think you get an extra percentage off on top of that. So I think like the the current price would be like $99. Uh, and I think the introductionary price would was for a week or two. Uh, I'm pretty sure Momo can uh, can uh, correct me on that. Uh, what brush <laughs> do you use, by the way? Yeah, hey, Momo. Uh, yeah, you call me after that. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah cool, man funny. yeah yeah so, i don't know about the pricing but i think I, I can see the numbers man i think the class is doing really well so man so hey, anybody who's bought it like thank, thank you guys so much seriously yeah really appreciate it guys um yeah definitely i think you can get it for 99 bucks now because it's like a 30 percent off on top of it so nice so grab it when you can and you know like if you miss it don't don't despair because uh, we we do we periodically do sales, so you know we have like a base price, but we we periodic periodically do sales. Uh, you know, obviously the big one's gonna be in in November, the yep. Black Friday, that we all know. But we we all you know we all do sales. Uh, I've gonna mention that some of the classes also were uh, uh, discounted already as well. 
and some of those uh, who, uh, w which prices we lowered are actually going to stay on the lower prices as well. So, um, yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Uh, we made this one a little, uh, a little later than normally because, uh, yeah, like you were, I think you and myself were too busy to uh, to get on Monday. Yeah, um, I had some family stuff going on as well. Nothing bad, but but just you know, good like stuff, man. Yeah, sometimes you get hit by like unexpected, like oh, this has to happen now. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then on top of client work, all that, and I, you know, Fourth of July. So. And yeah, but Happy Fourth of, of July. July. Right after. So America, yeah. we found that this this time of day uh, and this day of the week actually worked best for both of our um, schedules, and we we made it happen. So. That's unusual, and normally we'll we'll you know we'll continue just doing the the release uh, Twitch streams, but but yeah, uh, yep. definitely definitely that. So awesome. Um, do, 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 what else? Yeah, my R is really hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like... you know, uh, I have a potato uh, <laughs> in my in my mouth, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can i can i can i plug can i plug one thing yeah go ahead plug okay away. so if anyone's listening and you're in vancouver i'm actually doing a live workshop we're like a first live workshop uh with a company called daisho d-a-i-s-h-o next weekend next saturday mm -hmm. so a lot of what i'll be covering uh it's not going to be obviously even a fraction of what i can cover in the learn square course but i definitely go over my process and kind of you know my background as well as some of the stuff that I didn't get to go over in the Learn Square course is some of the business stuff. Because I, I think personally, I think Mitchell, you're the same way where we, we both became like, we have, we, we work full-time job, freelance contract, and then you incorporate it and now you own like Learn Square as well. And there's different uh, numbers that, you know, artists, maybe they're not aware of, you can play around with and, you know, certain things that you know, the business, business side of things that are actually quite valuable. So I'm going to go over that as well in, in, in the workshop. So anyone who's around the area, please uh, check it out. Yep. Do it. Do it. Travel. Buy tickets yeah. and go there. Yeah. Buy tickets and then <laughs> if, and then Bill, uh, Bill Learn Square for that. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's going to be don't. rejected right away. <laughs> um, anyways, guys, again, the course is available right now. Uh, oh, last question. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but yeah, your mentorship is already sold out. Yes. Um, and I, I guess we'll just wait till the no, next. No, no. I mean, no. I've, I've been getting a lot of questions, and I, t I was talking with Andrew about it. So here's, here's how, here's what's happening. I think we have six people on the waiting list as of two days ago. So if anyone who's interested, please just let Learn Square know you're interested, and then yeah. we can get ten people or more. Then I will open a second one. Oh, perfect. Well, yes. Let's do that. Yeah. If you guys are interested, just uh, email us. Uh, you can actually use the help desk, uh, which is like right this here, this little button. I don't think people can actually see it on the screen, but on the lower end, lower lower left, uh, where my avatar is, there's a little help button. You can reach out to us through there. Uh, we read all of your emails and try to reply to them as fast as we can. And if you request to be on the uh, waiting list, we'll definitely add you there and then we'll know actually how many people are there. Uh, we do that. We, you know, we we try to do the waiting waiting list because uh, it's so difficult to organize time for instructors, um, because you guys are so busy all the time, and there just has to be, you know, incentive for you guys to actually do it. You know, doing it for one person versus ten people, it's it's a vastly different time investment. Yep. Um, you know, and uh, and it's also like the more people are in the in the class, it's just it just makes it easier for for both parties. So, yep. uh, that's that's the deal. Okay, yeah, guys, uh, class is up there. You can buy it now on LearnSquared.com. Uh, you can follow um, Steve on Instagram as well, Swang.art on Instagram, or go on his website, Swang.org, and then go on ArtStation, uh, just ArtStation.com slash swang give yep. the guy give give him a give him a lot of love <laughs> thanks guys thanks you and, thanks for uh, yep no worries uh thanks for joining us today uh we'll post this video as soon as we can on youtube so if you missed or you just joined like oh i missed it uh don't worry you, you're gonna be able to watch it on on youtube uh shortly after so hopefully by by end of today <clears throat> we'll have it 
up and running. So if not, then then definitely tomorrow. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. Thanks, uh, thanks, Steve, for being here. And thanks, uh, much love. Mwah, big kisses. <laughs> and <laughs> love for everybody. And uh, see you guys uh, next time. Cheers. Cheers, man.